Well, I want to take an introductory look at functional groups. Um, it is often said that a hydrocarbon with single bonds, one, two, three, four carbons, butane, all single bonds, doesn't offer much functionality. Um, I often say all I can do is burn it, meaning combust it in oxygen to make CO2 and water. However, if there's a functional group on this molecule, we can do reactions with it. Now, a functional group can be simply a double bond having a pi bond because it's reactive. For example, we can go ahead and take ethene with a double bond. F for two carbons, ene telling us it's got a double bond. And like last time for polymers, have a radical come up and attack this bond, it will go ahead and open up and extend the carbon chain. And we can add a unit here, another unit, another unit, another unit. So a double bond meaning an alkene between carbons, will go ahead and give us functionality. And this certainly is not cooperating. We can also have functionality in the sense of having some oxygen present. Now, oxygen usually likes to have two bonds. So let me hold up this little model group and say, here's an oxygen with lone pair, lone pair, single bonded to hydrogen, single bonded to something else. Well, if I take butane, all single bonds, and do a substitution, meaning remove one of the hydrogens, and replace it with this OH group. Whoops, too many sticks. Um, what we have is four carbons in a row and now a functional group, an OH group. This OH group is what we call an alcohol group. Now, naming of alcohols is simple, and we'll do reactions in a moment. Let me go ahead and name this. There are four carbons in a row, all single bonded. So the name of this is butane. Butane. But it's not butane any longer because I knocked off a hydrogen and put an OH group. The OH group is an alcohol, OL ending. So we name alcohols by simply changing the ending of the, if you will, parent molecule to OL. So let me knock off the E at the end. And this becomes, and it'll sound correct, butanol. Butanol. Now, I do have a problem, and that is I could have put the OH group here at the end or on this carbon in the middle. Now notice I didn't continue on and say I could have put it here or on this end. Because if you were to say to me, well, you said you can put it on this end, but what about putting it on this end? They're the same. All I have to do is turn the molecule around and convince you, hey, I did put it on this end. So I have the choice of here or here. If I put it here, it's the same as here. If I put it here, it's the same as here. Now what I need to do is tell people I put it here and not here. Looks like a big dog. What I'm going to do is tell people I'm going to number the carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4. I know to start at this end because this is special. This has the functional group. So off of carbon number 1, then 2, 3, 4, off of carbon number 1 is an alcohol group. I simply name this 1-butanol. The 1 corresponds to where the alcohol group has been placed. Let me do a switch. Let me go ahead and take this off and exchange it with the alcohol group. And I'm going to hold this up so you can see it in just a moment. Now the OH group, the alcohol group, is off of a different carbon. Would you please name this new molecule? I hope the name that you just got for this new molecule is carbon 1, carbon 2. 2 has the alcohol group, so this is going to be 2. Butanol. It's butane because it has four carbons all single bonded. Off of carbon number two is an alcohol group. We do not name it carbon three, three butanol. And here's why. You might look at this and say, hey, I want to name it from this end. One, two, three. In chemistry, we use the lowest numbering system possible. So you and I get the same name. This OH group is closer to this end, so we start counting going carbon one, two. If we started at this end, it would be three. Three is bigger than two. That's how this works. I um, have an interest in making what's known as an ether. Let me take the OH group off and put our hydrogen back in here so that once again we have four carbons in a row and we have butane. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to open up the carbons in the middle and sneak in, put something inside there, and it's going to be an oxygen. This oxygen is going to have two single bonds 
and these two bonds are going to go to two carbons. And this is a beautiful symmetrical molecule. Oxygen in the center makes a zigzag. Carbon, carbon, oxygen, carbon, carbon. When we have an oxygen, it's going to spin over and hit me. When we have an oxygen and it's in the middle of a molecule, and the molecule has carbon and carbon. Now, it doesn't have to be symmetrically in the middle. I could have two carbons and 100. But I've got to have an oxygen here and carbons on each side. We have what's called an ether. Naming of ethers is really quite simple. On this side, I have an ethyl group. Ethyl for two carbons. On this side, ethyl group. So this is ethyl, ethyl, ether. Sounds just wonderful. Ethyl, ethyl, ether. Let me draw this up on the board for a moment and name it with you. Oh, I just drew up two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right of this oxygen in the middle. Notice I'm not going to show any hydrogens. I'm tired of drawing hydrogens. We make the assumption that every carbon has four bonds. So if they're not shown with four bonds, this one's shown with one at the end, there are some hydrogens sticking out. This is an ether because an ether has an oxygen surrounded by carbons. And the name of this is diethyl ether or ethyl ethyl ether.